So, uh, again, uh, thank you all uh, for taking time tonight to uh, participate in our meeting. Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, I've got it's like 6.06. And let's jump right in because we have a really full agenda. Um, we have the minutes that were part of your package. And uh, is there – I've reviewed those. Uh, does anybody have any requests for alterations, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Hearing none, I'd like to have those placed on the record. Off we go. Um, since we have John Tebow joining us, um, what I'd like to do is uh, jump right in there, John, so we don't keep you too late tonight. Uh, John, you're here to basically kind of tell us about a year like no other. That is that is for sure. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important for me to start by uh, thanking every single one of the uh, uh, staff that worked for me. Uh, they did an outstanding job. Not only the aquatic staff, which I oversaw, but also the crew program, which did fantastically, uh, the, and the uh, camp staff, which I oversaw, which did a phenomenal job. You know, we challenged these kids at the beginning of the summer, and I was very honest with them about what they may encounter and how difficult it was going to be. And it wasn't going to be that fun summer job. And uh, they really, really did a great job. Very, very proud uh, that, that they worked for us. Um, each and every one of them camp camp staff came every day outdoors at Memorial wore their masks. We went inside for 10 minutes total uh, two times. And then one day we had it, we had to go up to Simsbury farms but other than that, they're out on those baseball fields all day. No complaining. Great energy. Uh, program basically uh, eight sessions sold out. Uh, no reported incidents of any kind other than typical kind of kids making bad choices as far as uh, campers. So we had to do some of that kind of stuff, but nothing COVID related. Um Flipping over to the aquatic program, uh, they really were challenged because not only were they uh, having to follow really, really difficult uh, and strict protocols, and you also have to remember that we really didn't have any guidance from the state until about two weeks before we opened. You know, we kind of set down the marker of what we are going to do, and it's a, and the state basically followed what we said, and. Uh, it, it was a challenge, uh, and they all came up uh, fabulously. I also want to acknowledge Grant Gritzmacher, the sprinter swim team coach, who put together an outstanding swim team program, uh, took in over $14,000. Attendance was strong every single day, and they didn't have one swim meet. And, you know, every parent, the, most of the feedback I got was just outstanding. So they did a great job. He socially distanced. He had everything laid out. And the same thing with Ann Carabillo, the crew coach, who did a very socially distanced uh, crew program. And that was real successful, too. So overall, great, great effort by everybody. But I just want to put that on record that those kids really, really deserve incredible credit for the uh, job that they did this summer. Very proud of them. <laughs> Well, you know, John, uh, the only way those kids uh, do a good job is if uh, the person in charge, you, uh, provide the leadership, the organization, and the support that they needed. Um, all throughout the summer, um, I, have, I happen to live in a neighborhood with a lot of young kids, and a bunch of them go to the farms. And they know that I'm on park and rec. And I, I only heard just absolutely fabulous things about both the camp program and what you guys were doing at the farms. I'm going to pick on the farms just a little bit from a standpoint of that's where more of my, my, my neighbors are from. But the clean team, the politeness, the respectfulness when somebody may be not doing what they're supposed to be doing the professionalism. I mean, these are kids. You're, you're supervising young men and women. And I got to tell you, uh, and I was aware. Like, so I had, I had neighbors asking me, like you said, you came up to l the last two weeks. You didn't know really what the rules were. Mm. I had parents left and right asking me. I have a dog. So I walked the neighborhood and God, the worst thing I could ever do is because I see everybody. 
John, you and your staff, with the time you were given, uh, this is just, you know, we hate all the, 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 the extraordinary comments we hear from everybody. Unprecedented. I got to tell you, I, I'm so proud of the job that you and your staff did this year in the time frame you were given with the moving. Also, the, you know, it was moving all the time as to what you could do and what you couldn't do. Um, all I ever I, I got to tell you, I didn't hear a single negative comment. All I heard was I feel safe. My kids had a great time. Staff was well trained. Staff was polite. Uh, so in a year like no other, um, I want to make sure that you understand and you can pass along to your staff. Uh, kudos. 100 percent. Fabulous job. And I know that our commission has talked about it. Uh, and if, so if I have any commission members here who also went, happened to go up to the pool, I'd love you just to chime in just to uh, give our thanks and our kudos uh, to John and his staff. I got to go to the pool and I couldn't be more proud of the staff and being a have been been being a part of this wonderful community. I just you felt safe, you felt welcomed, you everybody was just so happy to have some normalcy. Um I just the leadership of the whole Parks and Rec was just is just has always been amazing, but this year especially, I just couldn't believe how much you guys stepped up. So thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah. You empowered the kids to become leaders, um, and it's an invaluable gift to have those lessons of life. But also, how it reflected to the community was such a positive thing, and it 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 helped the teens as much as. The community. So um, you really made us feel like um, we were a community that could be safe and still be active. Yeah. Well, I yeah, appreciate I that. Would, you know, we I always would. we always make a point to tell the kids and the staff that you know they're representing. I say this every year. Some of them I can watch their mouths move because some of them are on multiple staff, so they've heard it a million times. But you know, they represent the town. They rep represent the recreation department, and I say most importantly, I think they represent me. And I needed it this year more than ever. And each and every one of them were just outstanding. I was, it, it was great. You know, we always say recreation, we see, you know, Tom and I, we think uh, strongly that recreation is essential. And I think this summer, I think we proved right. how essential we really are. So. Really is. Sarah? I was just going to say, I, I didn't make it up to the pool myself, but I was just recently, although I heard little tidbits throughout the summer from people, I was recently with a group of people who did not know I was on a Parks and Rec Commission and we're having a, um, a, a fan session for the pool. And we're just um, talking about how fantastic it was and how it was the one outlet that their families had over the summer and that they couldn't have been happier with how everything was run. Um, it, was, it was the best year ever. It's mm, great. And what I'll do, John, I'll finish it up with, uh, so uh, just an individual I play golf with, and then he has a, uh, he has a nine-year-old daughter, and they were one of your, your users in the afternoon session, the second session. Mm -hmm. And his comment was that it was, and I think it, it kind of goes off of Danielle's comment, it was so nice to have something normal to do, where, but here was the key, that his wife and he felt safe in letting their daughter and going with their daughter to the pool, hanging out with her friends, and then going home and saying, you know what? Things are not that bad. Things are pretty good. Things are fairly normal. So I just, he was the one guy that I thought of that said, you know what, Dave, just if you get a chance to say thank you to folks, tell them that, uh, you know, I was there. So his story is uh, he began to complain about it. He was there three nights a week uh, early on and went to four. Uh, and then he said, I, I can only do two. Uh, so the family really used your, your services. And just in a year that we've had more challenges, uh, we all really appreciate what you did. Great. Thank you. I, I, it's going to be difficult to go back to the old way now that people had, uh, you know, seating. And their chairs brought to their spots for them, but we'll we'll give it our best shot again next year, hopefully. So well, but again, thanks again. All righty, okay. I can only charge for a concierge service. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's 
I tell you, a lot of the kids, a lot of kids on the clean team, they said, I have a new respect for the person who has to seat me at a restaurant normally. They didn't realize how challenging that was. No, so, uh, you know what? Great. Fabulous. Yeah, we, learned, we learned a lot. So I appreciate all your kind words. Thank Even you. Giving you revenue ideas, uh, John. Yeah. Well, the, the biggest one is people want the margarita bar upstairs. That's that. Sounds like a winner. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, all right. There we go. All right. The, the, the margarita bar. Let's uh, let, let's table that one for next year. And we can Alrighty. work on that with a restaurant. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, and, and John, we don't expect you to hang around. Thank you so much. Right. And uh, Thank, you. Thank, you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. We'll see you at the rink. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Next All right. Time. Okay, bye. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is the golf course restaurant lease, the RFP. And I think this, uh, whether it's Jerry or Tom, you know, Tom, why don't you take the lead? And then maybe Jerry, you can. Uh, I did Jerry, my work already. You, you, yeah. you, you, you can pipe in briefly, Jerry. So Jerry, Jerry's been a work. I'll tell you, Jerry's been a workhorse for everybody. Everybody who who knows Jerry knows he works hard. He puts his energy into everything. Jerry is Jerry is taking this re- the golf restaurant thing on with like the bull by the horns. He's full full steam ahead. He's been really integral in putting together a team that's um, helped put together. Uh, so far, we're, we're in a first draft, or I would say no, maybe third draft of our RFP for the uh, golf course restaurant vendor and. Um, what we've done is Jerry's assembled a group of people from from Sarah at Ma- on the Main Street Partnership to Bob Crowther from the uh, EDC and a few members of your commission as well, and um, they've really been working hard to to get a feel to get a good feel for what is needed at the restaurant, what we should be looking for in a vendor, and identifying um, who uh, you know potential vendors in town. and And one of the things that they really did, and and Kelly is a big part of this, is too too is they put together a marketing brochure for the restaurant to really sell what we have, the opportunity that we have up there for uh, for a vendor to come in and really, really make something out of it. Um, so I think that'll be integral. To Kelly, thank you. And it's also in your packet too. If you had it. <laughs> nice, so, Kelly. It's in um, the package. Yeah, but uh, good, good. So those are getting distributed out in town. We we hope to have uh, the town manager's office is looking over the RFP right now. Um, we hope to get that back very, very soon and be able to get that into the, out into the public uh, at the beginning of October. I think, Jerry, that was our goal. Um, so we're still relatively on, 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 a, on a good timeline for that. Um, and then moving forward, you know, we would anticipate responses, I think, coming back by the end of November. And then uh, hopefully by in and around December 1st, at that point, we should have um, to be to the point where we're negotiating with a vendor on a contract for uh, the foreseeable, you know, foreseeable future. That I think that's our plan. Um, part of this study that we, uh, this work that we've been doing too, is, uh, and Dave, Dave kind of got this going, was a uh, survey. Uh, many of you might have seen it if you're on the golf mailing list or on my mailing list at the rec department. You might have gotten an email um, asking what your use of the of the restaurant is, what you would like to see at the restaurant. Um, I am very ecstatic to tell you that. As of this afternoon, there was over 500 responses to that survey so far. It's really, it's really got a good head of steam going. The um, that's nuts. Yeah, 500 oh. responses so far, and, um, and I, I couldn't and I, answer more than once. No, I, I kept you from stuffing the ballot box, Jerry. So <laughs> the um, and that that was one of the settings we've actually had on it is you could it can only be taken once from an ID address. So, uh, but so to get to 500 this this quickly, it's been out out since literally last Friday, I think it's the first time it started to trickle out. And then uh, myself and the golf staff sent it out to our databases earlier this week. But 500 is a, is a great response uh, rate so far. I'll, I'll tell you, I've had 500 responses. I've had over eight, almost 800 people start the survey. Um, when I say 500 complete That's surveys. That's even out of here. Yeah, they, the, the, there's an end question. If somebody doesn't finish the last question where, we're, where it's kind of a last chance to enter a comment in if they just choose to skip you know if they've done everything else and they choose to skip it it doesn't record it as a 100 percent complete survey but it records their responses to date so we've actually had you know over 700 close to 800 responses on the survey um can i, so, can I jump in there for a second tom that sure. i did have uh one golfer call me had some trouble uh tried to do half of it and then saved it and then had a lot of trouble going back um so i just want to if someone at least attempts to complete part of it, you're still going to see at least as far as they got. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and I, I've I've heard from a few people. What I've told them to do is, 
it, it may be somebody in their household already took the survey. Um, if it was, you know, from their, if they took it from their desktop, it's going to record that desktop is being done. Um, what I've asked them to do is take it from a different device, from a cell phone or something. And you should be able to get, if you use the same link, you should be able to get through it. Or they can contact me by the network with a different IP address. Yes. Yep. So take it on a, you know. Now that ends on uh, it, the 28th Monday, Tom? I believe it is, yes. So we'll see. What I'd like to do is once we get that, um, I can send, I was waiting till the survey is done, then I can send um, not only the, the rest of the team that's done the um, the work on the restaurant RFP, but I can also send it out to the commission, a link to the survey results real time. Um, and you can see you, you, it's an interesting reading and there's a lot of good feedback and comments in there that I think we should take some time to digest. I didn't want to throw it all at you tonight. Right. Well, um, I, I, the one comment closer. that you gave to me the other day, which you, you were surprised at was that half the respondents didn't know we had a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> there was quite a few. Um, I'll throw and then one, I'll, I'll say one other, um, no, I won't actually. I don't want to spill the beans on the results. I don't want to take. No, no, you, you got to wait. I don't till, want to take the pool. Wait so, till everything's in. Yeah, but it, yeah, there's some interesting, interesting feedback in there, and very, and I will say it's very thoughtful. There's, there's no, uh, you could tell that people really put some thought into the responses, especially the open-ended feedback questions that they, uh, you know, they just didn't. A lot of people didn't leave it blank. Most, I've, I've done a lot of these surveys where those responses get skipped, and I would say I think I, we have three questions like that in the survey, and um, there are very thoughtful answers to almost all of them on every survey. So, interesting. So the questions are really good. The questions kind of easy to think. All right, ready? Let's do this one at a time. Sarah? Right there. I, I said, that it, I think it's because the questions were really good. They were very pointed, and I think it made people kind of think about what they really wanted, and I think that kind of, as you were taking it, kind of made you want to leave a response with well, that basically the feedback from the from our committee uh when we first started uh, talking about it and asking for input i think was great because we got a variety of thoughts that we could incorporate and, and i think tom summed those all up in, in the final output so i thought that was especially uh, very good for for the the overall quality of the questionnaire but what I was going to say, if we get back to the RFP, uh, I think you're just waiting for the town to sign off on, on the final draft that we I'm presented hoping. to them. Yeah. And then there's one other item that I had uh, uh, posed as a possibility uh, with what's going on. And I think Sarah Nielsen had jumped all over that was the fact that maybe we don't charge rent. We give an option to the vendor uh, where we get a percentage of gross sales. Uh, that gives uh, that vendor a little bit of an opportunity to build his client base, as well as the fact if we're, uh, and that's open to a person that is interested in making an investment uh, in the physical facility itself. So uh, that, the fact that we're going to talk about two different uh, lease term options, uh, gives us and gives the vendor some flexibility. And I think it, it opens up more possibilities to us. And I know Tom's gotten phone calls back from some local restaurants and he doesn't have to share that, but uh, already inquiring, they heard, they heard the fact that the, the restaurant's going out to bid and people are calling me already before we even publish the RFP. So I think what, what I want to do at this point, so if you just by historical perspective, um, our uh, concern that led to all this was the past contracts literally had one bidder. And uh, through our work here with Kelly and Jerry and our commission saying, look, at part of our problem is we really need a vision statement. We really need to have uh, something that we can use to say we have a vision of what this property could be like, I think has been critical. Um, so I want to thank that everybody that's been working on this, Sarah, I know that at least in this kind of subcommittee, Sarah and Jerry, Kelly, Tom, and myself, uh, especially Kelly, the artwork on this brochure uh, is just 
it, it at least looks like we're professionals, you know, and, and so often we don't come across that way. Um, so I want to just say thank you, Jerry. You know, you did a great deal of legwork getting the photos. And then, Kelly, your perspective on, hey, that's kind of a crappy photo. Can we get a better photo uh, because of your expertise? And, Sarah, you, you know, you're a user of the facility and you understand what, what needs to be done. I just want to say that I really think as we move forward, I'm really hopeful that one of the things that shows this commission is doing great work is if we can find a quality vendor under the right terms, not only to come in, but to build this property. So I'm excited. I, I think that uh, as we move forward, uh, I really hope we're going to have maybe some, uh, some multiple interest from vendors who have some vision on where to go. Uh, but certainly, Tom, uh, I can't wait to hear. Don't. Don't give it to us yet, but we can't wait to hear what those uh, survey results are. So I just want to thank, you know, there's a, this subcommittee has put a lot of time and effort into it. I just want to acknowledge your work. Thanks, Dave. One quick comment. Yeah. Uh, first, I can't take the credit for the graphics. That was the graphic artist, even though I did have some input. So I don't want to take credit where it's not due. You got them the printed. Other, the, other, the other comment to, to the commission is I'm, I'm hopeful that the town will have a sense of a cooperation with whoever the vendor is that gets selected so that uh, kind of a creative solution can be implemented, especially as it relates to the, uh, the infrastructure, because I feel like that's a big challenge. No, it that, is. Well, we need some there. flexibility from the town. All right. Uh, if, if there are any questions on that, or should we move on to the, <laughs> we're going to bore you guys with some of this contract stuff for a while here. So, um, Tom, why don't we move on to the RFQ for the for, for the uh, the golf professional? Sure, for, it, it, this will be relatively quick. For those those of you who don't know, we have a, a golf professional and and he hires a staff up at Sims Ray Farms Golf Course. They've been there since I believe two thousand, Jerry. Two thousand one. Uh, Twenty one years. Twenty one years. So yeah, so not actually nineteen ninety nine. Then Close um, I think John came in the year I came came in, so that was nineteen ninety nine. For when we had the old form of government, the, his contract had been um, renewed because of great performance over the years, and um, he continues to perform at a high level. The town implemented a new purchasing policy, um, cleaned up some a lot of the language in the charter a couple of years ago, and as a result of that, um, a lot of these uh, long-term contracts that we had had are uh, you know be going through the formal process of review. I guess is the best way to put it. And the golf pro contract is one of those. So we are uh, doing our request for qualifications. Um, we have, I've got a, uh, working on a second draft of, of that proposal or request for qualifications now. Um, I expect that that'll go out also the first week in October. Uh, we are certainly very hopeful that our the current pro and his staff will, will uh, submit an application for that. We'd love to work with them uh, further and um, we're doing what we can to to um, make sure that that every every opportunity is given to the current staff to to uh, come back here, um, but it is part of the town's process, and it's it's a it's a, a process that we have to work through to get to the future on the other side. <laughs> so um, I have, like I said, I'm on the second draft of it. Uh, my anticipation again is that this will goes out in early October. We get so we get some uh, proposals back to us by early November. And again, by and by the end of our golf season, we've we've negotiated or very far for a lot for very far along on the next contract with the golf pro at Sinsbury Farms. So, um, anybody have any questions on that? No, I think though that uh, again, I, I think what's interesting here is we are with a town manager. Uh, we are reviewing all processes. And I want to make sure that our golf professional understands this is no way a reflection on what the community, I see all the nodding of the heads, no way does this reflect what the community believes about the quality of he and his staff, uh, that Maria is doing her job and she's got to do her job. Um, and yet uh, we recognize that John and his staff have been a valuable asset for 21 years and frankly, a valuable asset this year more than ever. Uh, I just think one of the simplest solutions, the idea that we had the credit card machine brought outside of the window because we couldn't let people in a town building and a couple of stickers put up to say, keep your distance. And yet 
put an employee in the register right there. What a creative solution. I, I just, I happen to play Wittenberry. They make you walk in one at a time. It's cumbersome. It's ridiculous, very frankly. Uh, so uh, I just, in case any of the, the, the professional staff are watching, we're doing what we need to do, but we really respect what you've done for us uh, and continue to appreciate what you've done for us here uh, this year. Dave, that's, did that's, you know that if yeah. you get too close to the window, a siren goes off? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought they I, might I, just spray with water or something, Jerry. Yeah. I, I just want to echo Dave's that comments. Was my I next mean, thought, and John and his staff—they're—they they are valued, and they are—they are tremendous asset to what makes Simsbury Farms Simsbury Farms. And anybody who go, anybody who's a part, either either you golf or you go to the pool, it, it, it's very family oriented up there, and and the customer service oriented staff that we have, whether they're at the pool or at the golf course, that that's that's what help generate that feeling and there, there's no one who's ever said an ill will about any of our staff and and i get it weekly emails from from folks who compliment compliment john and his staff and they know how much they're they know they're valued i value them i think our our town management values them and again again this is just it's a formal process that we have to go through and and my hope is that you know we'll we'll be all set in the end here and everybody's we're coming on the other side just like where we are right now so there we go great everything's going well at the golf course all right uh so i don't keep all you guys let's keep moving the review of the special revenue fund subcommittee uh, discussion um jerry if you don't mind i'm going to make this one brief because we didn't accomplish much. i don't want to say anything good man good man so we have reformed the committee with the board of selectmen uh, two representatives board of finance two representatives park and rec two representatives about how do we fix the revenue fund um, I think our first meeting was really more of a historical uh, type meeting where we educated uh, a couple of folks uh, that were not on the prior committee that's now we're on our third try. So three strikes and you're out. Um, but it was productive from the standpoint of there was a good dialogue. Jerry's already working on uh, getting some additional numbers that everybody needs to see. But what the goal is, is to fix some of the deficiencies that prior government acts caused to make our revenue fund appear to be a fund that loses money every year when in fact if we allocate expenses like almost every other revenue fund in the state we would appear to be in the black not in the red so i'm going to literally leave it at that that this is a work in progress we're already selecting dates for the next meeting uh, but there has been no even substantive discussion on what should we do to recommend how to repair it or fix it or what to do with it. It's just I'm happy that we are actually reformed. We've now met and now we're going to work this process through one way or another. I don't you know, whatever the outcome may be, that's fine. But we're we're at least now it took us about six months to get this group formed again after we were told by Board of Selectmen get formed again. So it was 18 months. There we go. Thank you, Jerry. So we'll keep you posted. How about that? I think that's right. a great way to leave it. Yeah. Um, impact, fall sports, the COVID. So I, I, I had someone, someone asked me, um, I, I can't recall who it was, who asked me just to report on where we are with um, fall sports in Simsbury, just to give you an update what's going on. Um, a lot of the state allowed a lot of our youth sports organizations to resume practices and games of some sort um on june on june 20 june 17th or june 20th um and a lot of those groups took advantage of that as you if you if you were around town you saw little league games happening over the summer uh you saw high school or uh high school age basketball baseball and um games taking up taking place at memorial park uh, soccer started clinics in in june at curtis at curtis park those have carried right through to the spring um i did review all of their covid anybody that uses our fields has to submit a covid plan to us that that I review, our, our health department reviews as well. They've all been very good about it. And if there's been a need to, to give a little um, uh, uh, correction here and there, they've been very uh, constructive, constructive criticism. They've been very good about accepting it and moving forward from that. Um, but this fall, we do have the, soccer, the Simsbury Soccer Club is playing over at Curtis. Uh, we have you, uh, Little League is playing at Memorial Park and over at Town Forest. Uh, we have our fall our fall field hockey program for grades six, uh, five, and six kids, and there is also the parent or the parent run organization for seventh and eighth graders. They're playing at Henry James and at Sinsbury High School. 
Um, and then youth football was the only organization, and everybody's well aware. I don't want to beat, beat a dead horse to death, but um, everybody's well aware of the, the CIC uh, issues with football, high school football, and that trickled down to, to, to the youth football organizations as well. Um, so our, our organization in town started and stopped trying to get things going. Um, typically, they start in early August. They put things off till, I think, about the beginning of September, and then they just decided they, they couldn't make it work. Um, but what they are attempting to do is, a is to do some flag football type stuff for some of the younger kids in their organization, and that's going to resume this weekend. So they are offering some sort of program. Um, we have also been doing a, a, a outdoor basketball clinics at Simsbury Farms on the new courts up there. Those have been very well attended. I believe we have 30 kids up there on Wednesday nights uh, doing these outdoor clinics, and, and those have been a big hit as well. Um, you know, then we get to the big questions is what's going to happen in, in the winter. I'll save you, save you the, the, the time in asking me. I don't know. Um, youth basketball is is going to be very difficult to do based on what the guidance is right now from the state and with access to the to the public schools being as limited as it is um, and typically with youth basketball you have a lot of kids in the gym at the same time to be able to break that down to much smaller numbers the time is just not there um, it's going to be very difficult uh, what we're planning right now is just kind of on our calendar instead of starting in november we're pushing it back to january 1st at the earliest and as we get toward the fall maybe late october early november we'll, we'll reassess where the state guidance is at that point whether high school basketball is going to be allowed um, or not and then we'll make our decision from there um, we are planning uh for a regular rink season at this point what we have we're going to be working with the the hockey organizations who rent our rink there's certain the, the we have an advantage over a lot of other places in that we have an outdoor uh outdoor rink um i've already been in contact with the state earlier this week uh because there wasn't any guidance for outdoor rinks yet and um as of yesterday afternoon they posted on their website the state uh decd depart uh who's been really coming up with a lot of these guidance for for restaurants and, and sports organizations and that kind of thing. We have been limited to 50% capacity. Um, so for instance, our public skating session um, will have up to 140 people um, this this winter. Uh, what we're planning on doing is dialing back our, the number of, of weekend public skating sessions that we typically offer, just because of the it's very difficult to get people in and out, sanitizing rental skates, that kind of thing. So what, what I think we're going to do is limit it to a Sunday afternoon time slot of two to four. So we'll offer that, you know, general family skate once a week. Um, the, we, we've seen our a high demand for our ice time this year because, again, we're an outdoor rink and um, it allows for more things than the, than the indoor things, indoor rinks will. So we are, um, from a revenue standpoint, we're going to be picking it. We're going to be just fine selling ice time to other groups that might have been used for public skating in the past. Well, um, these are outside uh, ice hockey organizations, Tom. What's that? We, we are seeing interest from Avon in others in other schools as well, buying ice time from us this year, you just because they know they're not likely to be Hartford. that schedule the same with us than they would maybe from an indoor location. Who knows where the state will go with the guidance on that. But, you know, things that we're thinking about are whether we, we probably can't allow – full use of the locker rooms because of lack of ventilation. Um, they're, they're small and typically a hockey team is more than more than 10 people. Um, and so you could, you couldn't socially distance in our locker rooms, but what we could do is offer more bench space outside. The players come in uniform, they leave in uniform. Um, obviously no skates, of course, but things like that and adding sanitizing, sanitizing spaces outside, possibly expanding the, um, the length of our team benches you know, you can open up a gate on the on uh, from the outside to the bench. Throw another mat out. Throw yep. some chairs out. So then you can space those kids out on the bench a little bit more. So these are things that John, John, and I and, and Orlando are working through. Um, we think it. We, you know, we'll have a good plan in a couple of weeks that we're going to run by the uh, the people, the good people at the health department. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think we're in good shape. We're moving ahead with basically a, a full season at this point, starting in in and around uh, Halloween, early November. Well, one of the things, too, Tom, you could suggest uh, to those organizations is that they try to get as many players with the plastic masks as opposed to the open uh, cages. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, we, and that's been, been going on for a few years now. Those do still have some of the vent, vent holes in it that the health department doesn't necessarily like. But, um, but as far as ho hockey is still allowed right now under yep. 
the state guidance. So, you know, it's been allowed since the summer, limited to, I believe, 25 people on a sheet of ice. So for hockey, we're getting cl- we're close to that number. We're, we're there's never 25 people on the ice other than warm ups. So um, I think we're going to be all right unless uh, the metrics increase and the, and the state starts to back off on some of these two sports. But it, it will be very interesting and telling to see what happens with high school hockey um, and basketball and obviously wrestling, too, for those for those winter sports. Um, that typically take place indoors um, and with fans and that kind of thing. So we'll we'll be anxiously watching what the state does because if the high school season is canceled, that certainly is a big chunk of our uh, revenue for the winter. So, but right now we're planning for a full season. Real, hey, Tom, real quick, are you going to have Sorry, skating Sam. lessons for the kids? We we are doing skating lessons. The okay. state's going to allow us to do it at half capacity, just like at we half did some capacity. Summer. Okay, just curious, that you- Sarah. There you go. Um, if I, I know the ice, if there's a, a timeline for the ice going down, given, you know, we try to push, push an early season if the weather cooperates to try to get ice time in before stuff might get canceled. It would be near impossible for us oh. to do that. We have the rink painting project going on right now. We're doing a, um, a lighting retrofit as well um, in, in or it's going to take place in early October. Um, and if we've learned anything the last five years, we always get snake bit with the weather, um, the warm weather that comes at the end of October. So to push our luck and, and try to open up sooner wouldn't be fair to to those who do the, the, the hard work people do to schedule uh, their group's ice time. Kelly? Go ahead, Kelly. I'm waiting. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't mean to step on uh, everybody else's toes. Uh, just one related item. And this is actually before your return, Tom. The commission spent quite a bit of time about uh, automatic defibrillators and portable automatic defibrillators. I just wanted to ask if you could remind the youth groups that you're involved with that it's their responsibility since we didn't end up doing stations in a lot of places, in some places we did, but that they're obligated to make sure that they are available and that they know who, which coach has them. Because you know this came up in a conversation recently and that was an issue, i.e. some coaches may not know which uh, bag they're in or where they are. And I think it's one of those things where it just an occasional reminder wouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. We actually have one at the far, at the farms. We have one at the pool. We also have one we have and that one from the, the pool season goes down to the ring for the ring season. Um, since I've been here, I believe it's been used twice actually um, in the last two year, in the last two and a half years. Wow. Um, and there's and, one at the uh, golf course too. And there's one at the golf course too. So every, every sim- member of Simsbury Youth Hockey's coaching family at least knows where it's located right by the water fountain as you come in the building it's great everybody passes it you can't go to the bath you can't go to the restroom without seeing it as you walk in the building um i think it's in a bit, very visible place for for us i i do not know if they if they have additional ones for their coaches on the benches uh, it's, a, a good, it's a good question i'll find that out especially but I know as there's one. there's changeover in coaches over the years you know because right. this goes back probably what three four or five years now yep yeah yeah good point oh, I'll, I'll bring that up with them yeah, so really a great, actually a great uh, update on where we stand, understanding that you've got a lot of things that are still up in the air. Uh, and certainly I think at our next meeting, uh, maybe hopefully things will be a little more clear, uh, especially from the state perspective. We hope so, yeah. If there's no further questions, how about uh, Simsbury 350 uh, movies in the park? Sure, the fun, here we go to the fun stuff. So uh, for those, those of you who, who were, I know Dave and Liz were both at the movie uh, Jurassic Park uh, a few weeks ago. It was a beautiful, crisp fall night. Uh, we had a crowd um, of just under cold. 500. <laughs> <laughs> a crowd of just under 500, a very uh, well-organized uh, event. They, they um, painted circles on the field. The crowd, I, I don't know how 500 people did it, but they managed to spread themselves out coming in and trickle in. So we didn't have a whole a whole line of people at any one time. Uh, the uh, 350 committee also gave out uh, blue and green glow necklaces. So the crowd was well, well um, uh, costumed, I guess, would be that, with those. And it looked really cool at night. The kids um, but it. It's a beautiful setup out there for the movie. It, it, this, if you could d- just... Um, get out there one night and see it. The screen sets beautifully on the stage. It's uh, it, it. You can see it from your vantage point from anywhere on the field. Dave and I walked to the back of the the back of the, the last row was just as good as the front row, I, in my opinion. And um, you could hear that you could hear it just as good as you can anywhere else on the field. Um, and it was again well organized. People really 
kind of took uh, the mask wearing and social distancing to heart as they came in and we had no problems with that. And uh, we expect another great night um, with, with the Raiders of the Lost Ark this coming Saturday night. Same same exact thing. The crowd is our, our limit from the state is 500 people. Um, we will be right at that number with our with those patrons who have already pre-registered and um, our volunteers for the evening. And we expect another you know fun fun night. The weather looks a little warmer, so you may, maybe don't need to bring the extra blanket this time. But um, and the volunteers we had from the 350 committee and other people were very helpful in in helping us check in people and and again not having people wait in line. Um, but yeah, it was a great, great show. And, and these are the kinds of things that I, I enjoy doing. I know you guys have been very supportive of it, supportive of them, and we hope to continue to do more of these in the future. So, so Liz, Liz, what did you think? Well, I'm just going to say right now that Tom is phenomenal and he really had everybody organized beautifully, the registration process. The communication, um, the logistics, it all went so smoothly. And, you know, we've never done it before, but it worked out. It worked out great. And um, the patrons were appreciative and they all appreciated the um, the freebie, of course, which was great. Um, thank you to Big Y and 350. But we've been working really hard to try to bring our community together, even during this difficult time. And um, Tom really facilitated that beautifully. And um, it, it was a great night all. And we're looking forward to Saturday and, and potentially having um, a little bit more of uh, communication opportunities so people can know what's going on in the community, what our plans are as we potentially open up next spring or summer, more fun things that we're going to plan for them. So it's all about Simsbury and um, community. Awesome. No, and Tom, I, I also appreciate you doing this. Uh, I don't know if, if all of you have made it down there to the uh, the band shell, I'll call it. Uh, that's where the, the 350 celebration has its banners. If you haven't had a chance to do that yet, please do so. Uh, the banners are really well done. I love Tom tie-in with 350. I know you did this last year, but this is just another way to get families down there. I saw everything from they brought their own dinners to they're ordering pizzas or food from Iron Horse, i.e. help at a local business. Uh, so same thing. Uh, Tom, kudos. Uh, yeah, you could, uh, as long as you hold off the rain on Saturday night, which I think you're going to, I, I think it's going to be a great night out there again. And uh, just want to thank you for putting it together. No, you're welcome. And I, I, again, Missy, Missy DiNuno and the Simsbury 350 team have been very – they're all helpful. Missy and I work great together. We do. I think we're going to do a lot of great things uh, for the community in the future. And, and um, they, yeah, they're just, everybody's just the volunteers from 350. They, they've worked really hard. A lot of time and effort went into a lot of things that didn't happen this year. So it's good to see kind of, kind of some of the fruits of that, yeah. of that fundraising labor. And uh, Liz, Liz has been schlepping merchandise all over town. So to see some of the fruits of that labor start to start to real can become to realization is really, it's really good to see. And, and um, they had a lot of their volunteers there that night, and it was it, they got to enjoy the show as well. And um, uh, you know, it, it, I think we, we had a meeting this morning. I think they're talking about some really exciting things for the spring yeah. and, and, and then into the, the warmer months next year. So we'll see. There'll be just keep your eyes open. You're going to hear some hear and see some really good things coming out about the extended 351 next year. So <laughs> 350 plus plus. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, Tom, we then move into more fun stuff. Uh, tell us about the Halloween Spooktacular. Sure. This this is from, uh, for those of you who for years may have attended the Simsbury Chamber of Commerce's Chili Challenge down at the Meadows. Love it. Obviously, that's, some, that's something that couldn't couldn't happen this year due to COVID. Um, so that, you know, this is kind of a pivot event. And, um, you know, we've done the, the trick or trunk at Simsbury Farms for many years. Um, it's a very fun event. Um, so the, the Morgan Hilliard from the chamber reached out to Missy DeNuno and myself, and we've been kind of talking for about the last six to eight weeks about what could we do this fall um, in place of the Chili Challenge. And we, we really focused in on a trick or trunk, and we talked to the health departments. We've been looking at what's been doing, what other uh, organizations are doing nationally to kind of come with a workaround for for trick for uh, trick or treating or trick or trunks. And I think we've come up with something pretty unique. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to line, uh, we're basically going to take place in the northbound lane along Iron Horse Boulevard. Um, we, we're having groups sign up in our time blocks. So within that hour time block, for instance, let's say nine o'clock, you can sign up for nine, nine fifteen, nine thirty, nine forty-five. 
And each of those 15 minute segments has, will have a limit of 30, 30 vehicles per time slot. So, you know, if you arrive at nine, nine o'clock, you're gonna be in a holding pen in one of those commuter lots behind Fitzgerald's. Nine o'clock starts, we're gonna send the first, first group of 30 cars down Iron Horse Boulevard, and they're gonna be stopping at vendors, local businesses tents along Iron Horse Boulevard. Um, as they go along, the vendors will, you know, you'll open up a window, you'll get your, you'll get your treats handed into here, just like the pickup curbside pickups at the restaurants. You're going to get your treats brought to your car from the vendor. Um, the vendor's tents will be decorated for Halloween. Hopefully they'll be wearing costumes. We're encouraging the participants in the vehicles to wear, to decorate their car, or wear some costumes. Um, and then once they finish that strip along Iron Horse Boulevard, they have the option of pulling into the, the Meadows, Banshell area where there'll be some food trucks. Uh, there'll be painted circles, obviously still in the courtyard. We'll have some bands and some kids entertainment in there as well during the day. Um, so each group, if you're in that nine o'clock time slot, once you get into the pack center, you have use of, the, of what's going on, the food trucks and the entertainment until 1130. They'll make the, the staff will make an announcement at 1130 saying, you know, we hope you enjoyed your time here. We got to make room for the next group of cars. They'll leave. Then the 11 o'clock people, or the 12 o'clock uh, wave of cars starts their way down Iron Horse. Um, so overall, there'll be uh, 120 cars per time slot. Um, you know, we, you're not limited in how many kids you can have in the car, but we during the registration process, we're using our website for this because it, it, we we have the infrastructure in place. So we can, we can ask how many people you'll have in the car so that the vendors can plan appropriately um, and the food trucks can maybe plan appropriately for how many people we'll have. Um, you know the thinking behind these waves is it allows us to stay under that 500 limit at the meadows when, when they all get there so that's why we're spacing this thing out it's basically going to be a day-long event starting at nine and ending at five um along iron horse and the and the performing arts center so should be a lot of fun we're fingers crossed for great weather that day and so you, you know, working this is... till six that day <laughs> it's just part of the job jerry <laughs> so, um you'll see me on the golf course on friday before that so <laughs> even yeah. better yeah so the uh right, no, right the, the, I'm forward to this. it's a nice nice twist on on halloween for uh i think it's nice safe twist based on you know what the guidelines have uh you know what we have in place right now and and it does get it, it's a great opportunity for those businesses in town who may not have gotten a lot of face time with people um this year to, to be out in front and, and let, you know, give something with their information on it while they're giving some treats and, and making a kid smile. So that's what we're all about. And we're glad to partner with the chamber and the PAC center again on this event. Tom, do you need any help in, uh, in a sense of volunteers from this committee in order to make this thing happen? We, we will. Yes. Uh, I'll send an email out in the next week or two about I that. Will. If, thank you. I'm so if you could excited. Just, Circle that date Thank on your you, calendar. Tom. <laughs> because my daughter talks about Halloween all year round. I talked to Tom about this this summer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anything you need. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is this is going to be kind of the start of something even bigger when, when things turn back to uh, normal next year down at the Performing Arts Center, some kind of a large Halloween event uh, with hay rides and all the good stuff that you that you normally would have. So. Um, yeah, we're happy to be doing this and uh, it should be a lot of fun. And I will send an email out. I, there will be a need for some volunteers to help with um, the stage and the pack center and, and maybe, you know, ushering people in and out of the meadow. So uh, I'll be reaching out. And if you have time available, just uh, let me know and we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you a nice job for a nice job for the day. And, and don't forget your costume as well. So there you go. And again, I just, you know, I, to all members, uh, part of what we do is uh, when Tom needs volunteers, I realize it's in, sometimes inconvenient uh, for those of us that don't have small kids that aren't really participating in the event our, it, itself. I, I just encourage you to think about find the time to help Tom out. It sounds like a great new idea and we got to make it work. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, That's sort of done the Simsbury celebrates for this year, isn't it? Well, they, I'm not sure about that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put it on the agenda, but since you brought it up, um, we are working on a of of a kind of a hybrid Simsbury. So everybody, that's a that's a what do you call it a. A cliche word for this year hybrid but yeah. um since race celebrates is is going to happen in it'll be a little bit different form than it has in the past but there it's too early for me to tell you exactly what's planned but I, I i if what's being talked about is going gonna going to happen uh this will be a simsbury celebrates that you will not forget 
I'll leave it at that. I t- Liz heard me talking about this this morning. Uh, I can't I can't tell you the details at this point, but it, it is we have some really f- fun and uh, exciting stuff in the works um, for a parade and or um, a possible fireworks show. Actually, you got you got more out of me than the Simsbury 350. <laughs> All right, um, no, no. Let's let let's not let the cat out of the bag yet. Uh, hit your mute button. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, we'll, so we get, we'll get more news on that soon. Yeah, we got we still have some agenda items, and I don't want to keep you folks too long. Uh, Tom, how about the uh, now we're hitting some old business? Uh, yeah. The update on the Meadowood um, acquisition. So you got your presentation back in June, I believe, about Meadowood. Um, the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance both had additional presentations. Um, uh, the Board of Finance had their, I'm sorry, Board of Selectmen had theirs in July. The Board of Finance just got theirs uh, last week, September 15th. Um, the project is still alive. It is not, um, it is moving forward, but at a, at a little bit slower pace, I would say. Uh, there has been support from members of both boards, but they, I don't believe they have taken a formal vote approving the project. I think that'll take place uh, this fall. Um, if it does move forward, it is likely uh, it will be discussed during the budget process this winter. And, and I think this is my, I'm, I'm talking from what I've observed that there could be uh, a possible referendum vote on this sometime in late winter, early spring. Um, Dave's been on. Dave's been involved in a lot of those meetings. So, if I'm if I'm misinformed, Dave, let me know. If I'm I'm not saying what's what I've no, heard, but I think the main thing there is Tom. I, I did appreciate you shared with me. I think today that you know we're getting some good letters of support. Uh, the, uh, the 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 lacrosse league, the soccer league, both identified the fact that hey, we work collaboratively with the town. We always are looking for the opportunity for more fields. This is our opportunity. And when you hear those two communities supporting it, and Tom, I think you'd agree with me, that's the kind of thing that eventually when push comes to shove as we get closer to a referendum, we're going to want to rally those troops and make sure it happens. Oh, def- de- definitely. I mean, this pro- this project, and you heard it during the presentation, it it, it really involves um, a lot of different aspects of, t- I mean, from a recreation standpoint, it's, it seems to be a no-brainer. But, um, you know, this pat- there's hiking, there's, there's historical recreation with the interpretive Mart, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, displays that could be set up. There's the bar. There's the historic barn preservation piece of this. Um, not you know even the athletic piece is great, but from from so many different angles, it, it is really a unique opportunity for the town. Um, I I'm hopeful that that it'll come to pass. Um, you know I can't say one way or the other at this point, but I would like to see. I, I personally would love to see see this happen for the town. Uh, but I think there will be a lot of support from it because from from so many different angles, there is uh, uh, something in it for everybody, I guess, to say. The conservation people get um, can get behind it. The passive recreation people can get behind it. The historic preservation people can get behind it. And then the, you have the youth sports uh, community will will certainly get behind it um, when when that time comes. So, yeah, you're right. It is uh, it's, it's moving along. It's moving along slowly. You know, there'll be there's some, certainly some hurdles that have to be jumped um before i can go to a vote but uh, you know let's let's all keep our fingers crossed that sometime uh this time next year we're celebrating a closing on on a on a beautiful piece of property for the town so does the do the commission members have any questions on that issue all right then next uh let's move forward with the um status of the open space uh acquisition or a transaction involving the holcomb street property sure for, for those of you who may have been following this in town um the, the Antonio family, um, Steve Antonio and his family have have uh, asked the town to sell them a piece of open space property that is to the rear of their property on Holcomb Street. And uh, it's a piece of, it's a landlocked, and I hate that word, but it is some, I guess the, the right term is a landlocked piece of open space. Um, it is not accessible uh, by a current trail or another piece of property that the town currently owns. Um, you, you know, it's not connected to the to a dead end street or anything like that. But it, what they they've asked for the town uh, to sell them this piece of property. Um, it has gone before the I believe the Board of Finance in the Board of Selectmen and the Open Space Committee. Um, the Board of Selectmen at their last meeting uh, did authorize the town manager to enter into sales discussion with the Antonio family for that piece of property that they wish to acquire. Um, the town is also, you know, at the same time, the town has been planning a bike trail um, extension, as you all know from 
from the uh, Route 10 intersection to with 315 along, so to be going along Terrafield Road up to eventually Terrafield Park and down through Terrafield then connecting to the Bloomfield Trail. Um, it, this, this trail has been in, in the planning uh, and design phase for quite a while. Um, but one of the things that's needed to make this trail happen is an easement across the frontage of the Old Well Tavern. Um, so if, if you're familiar with where that is, it's right before the bridge. Um, it, it's really a necessary, uh, the easement's necessary for this trail to happen. And um, so the town has been also negotiating with the Antonios to get the, the rights to that easement. Um, so we're hopeful, uh, you know, that both of these will happen, you know, um, that this e we'll get the easement for the bike trail um, sometime next year or when uh, construction will start sometime late next summer, I believe is what the current timeline is. Um, so anybody have any questions on that? Well, there we go. So then um, <laughs> here we go. The golf course uh, monthly report. Uh, gee, can you say good numbers? Uh, yeah. So we, we're just like uh, Jerry and, and we've had John Varengi on quite a few times over over this spring and summer. The, 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 the good times keep rolling up at Simsbury Farms. The, the weather has been good all summer long. Um, fortunately, we have a great, you know, the irrigation system is held up. Um, so the, the fairways and the greens are phenomenal. The, the, the level of play we've had up there has been great. Um, John and his staff, again, are doing a tremendous job. We've had some of the outings uh, that were canceled in April, May, and June have returned. Um, so we've had outings in September, late August and September. We still have a few more in, August, in October yet to happen. Um, so the, yeah, from a, from a strictly golf golf standpoint, they, they, they're doing a, they're knocking it out of the park this year. Um, this we had our best fiscal year ever last year. Uh, this year, the first uh, two two months of this year, July and August, were were right on pace with where we were in the in the early spring. Um, the heat didn't seem to keep a lot of the golf. I mean, the, 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 you know, normally you get to the dog days of August and play drops somewhat, but those part that parking lot was full nearly every day. And I know Jerry's up there, Dave's up there quite a bit, um, Sarah as well. It, 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 the course has never, in my opinion, I've never seen the course look better. Um, I'm right. certainly a novice and a duffer out there, but from when I hear the, the people who know what they're doing, they say the same thing. So um, kudos to Mike and his staff, uh, Mike Wallace and his staff as well. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, the September has been very good. Um, we'll get the final numbers back next week for September, but the I fingers think crossed that we can- September as well. Yeah. Yeah, we were very close to having a record. Was it August, Jerry? The, the last Saturday uh, in August, right? Well, we, we've Might been, have been uh, over $100,000 a month, virtually every month. Yeah. Uh, we didn't meet that in August because the last weekend of August, we had rain. Yeah. Uh, so typically, that, that means you're losing $7,000 a day. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've, yeah, we, we're, we're just under $100,000. We, we would have gone over, yep. but... Again, September's been good. Let's hope for good weather in October, and you know we'll stretch, we'll ride this train as long as we can. And and, and like I said, you know we're we're hoping to uh, keep the momentum going up there again next year. We'll have we'll have uh, some new momentum in the restaurant, and we hope that our uh, pro shop staff is is going to ride ride that train with us. So yeah, the other thing too is is that uh, the, the state has become a little bit more lax on the number of people at the outings. Uh, so that we're able to increase the size and numbers in our outings. I think uh, we started at 80. We're now uh, up to 120. Uh, so that helps a lot. Uh, I think uh, John, on last weekend, I think Sunday was the first time John actually had to go out and rent carts from his vendor because we didn't have enough. Right. So that's no, always I, a nice sign. Yeah, I want to emphasize also, so, you know, Again, the pro shop staff, everybody's doing a great job. Uh, Mike Wallace and his people, um, and I know we have a recognition. It's the next item on the agenda coming to Mike Wallace. But I got to tell you, I uh, real quick, I played over at Wintonberry about two weeks ago, and the place is a dog track. It was an absolute mess. Uh, and while they had somewhat of an excuse that they had a power outage a little longer than ours, I was absolutely convinced that the only reason we are so lean green and the money is coming in is Mike and his staff, including Brian, uh, that have just done a great job. And I just want to make sure the, the minutes reflect 
that we are so appreciative of the work that's been done in a year where more people had nothing else to do than play golf. But you know what? They chose to play golf at Simsbury Farms because Mike and his people and John and his people made it a welcoming place, made it a very comfortable place, made it a green place to play. Uh, so, again, please make sure the minutes reflect that we just cannot believe what a great job they did in a, in a challenging time. If I can, uh, which I normally do is interject myself on things, but uh, that's, that's what happens when you have a management company running a facility versus your own staff, because your own staff is always going to care a lot more about where they work than when you have a management company. Good for you, Jerry. I just didn't want to have to be the person that said it. Well, I'm not bashful. And I'm just going to. Uh, I'm just going to ditto that it's amazing that that golf course, with the amount of play that it's gotten, is green and looks like every time you step onto it, that you're the first person of the day to step onto it. It's yeah, yeah. fantastic, and all the smiling faces up there. And I certainly hope that I think there's a whole bunch of new golf addicts after this. Uh, you know, after this long year that we had, and I do think we're going to see continued success from it. In and I, I will attribute a lot of that to our members as well, because we put out those sand and seed buckets and the, the uh, staff, we don't have enough staff to take care of those. Our members grab those. We have some people taking carts and pulling those buckets out and going and just throwing grass and seed all over the fairways, just so that when people come to play that day, all the divots are filled. There's grass seed in there. You know, and that's just a testament to how much our players care. Exactly right. There we go. All right. Well, so segue is so easy here. Uh, the next oh item gosh. is the Friends of Simsbury Farms uh, Golf Tournament, a tribute to Mike Wallace. Well, it is a perfect segue, actually, uh, given the consideration that uh, we all gave about the uh, the course's uh, condition uh, and of course that's a direct correlation to Mike Wallace and so I have a request for the, uh, the commission uh, on the 2nd of October it's a Friday, uh, there is an 11 o'clock ceremony to honor Mike Wallace and those that are available for a quick, it shouldn't be more than 10 or 15 minutes it's at 11 o'clock at the farms and if you could possibly pop by to show your appreciation for Mike and, uh, in, and as we honor him, uh, that would be very much appreciated. And I think Mike is going to be very humbled that day. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of special and surprises planned. Support. Well, and Kelly, yeah. I appreciate the efforts you've made on this. Uh, and I, I ditto that. Uh, so uh, just, you know, we're all busy, right? So I took the day off. I uh, wasn't sure I was going to play golf, but Mike Wallace deserves a half an hour of my time to be part of the group that says, for all you've done, thank you. Uh, so even if you don't know Mike personally, um, I think, again, part of our responsibility as commission members, if you can find a way to block out of your schedule an hour of time, Come on up, because it's important we recognize his efforts. Is that right, Kelly? That's exactly right, uh, Dave. And there is a, uh, a formal ceremony that's going to take place. So it will be uh, a nice to have uh, members of the commission there to kind of show support and kind of show him uh, you know, how much we appreciate everything that he's done. Uh, I, I also wanted to mention on that topic that uh, uh, <laughs> the, the Friends of Simsbury Farms, which <laughs> I was <laughs> – I joined, I don't know how long it is now, maybe two years. Look year at Sarah half. laughing at you. Yeah, yeah I know she oh, is. Um, Sarah's replacing yeah, she, Sarah's running the other way. But the friends, uh, specifically Mr. Toner, who I think we are all uh, familiar with, has asked two things. And he asked me to com uh, just to voice this to the group. Number one would be anybody that ha has a couple of hours available on the second to help. Uh, we have a couple of contests. We have a 50-50 raffle that we need to have a man or woman, however you'd like to, to characterize it, uh, with a live person. Uh, we have registration needs, uh, and we also have auction items. So it, it, anybody that can squeeze a, an hour or even, uh, let me know. You can just shoot me an email, and then I'll, uh, I'll forward it along to the group. Uh, so as you probably know, I'm a part of that group, the Friends of Simsbury Farms. Uh, the second request that he asked me to voice is, uh, 
anyone that would like to join our group, uh, and, and you're probably aware of the fact that the Friends has funneled a fair amount of money into improvements in the complex, and we need another perspective. Uh, and I think that's a, it's a pretty hard ask, right, uh, from me, hard in that I'm, I'm pushing hard, but the heavy lifting's not much at all. We really, you know, we've been meeting virtually. The amount of effort that you have to put in is absolutely minimal, and the return is really, really positive. So I would, I would say, give it some thought. Other commission members that maybe aren't here, uh, give it some thought. We'd love to get another member uh, from the commission on that uh, that team. And they don't have to put up with me anymore. Yes. Jerry, it's uh, it's uh, it's been a pleasure actually working with you indirectly on that group. And you know, you have great input. All kidding aside, Jerry, you, you really do. No, well, we, you know, we had a couple of founders that put it together, and you know, we always need some new ideas and get rid of some of us old guys. That's. <laughs> I would say the same thing. The time I served there was, it was great. And it, that that committee does some fantastic things that I think don't always go noticed. And there's a lot of really smart people behind it. And uh, it's not a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. And, you know, more perspective is always, I would say on that committee is, is always welcome. It is. That's uh, yeah, exactly. Sarah, the perspective, because right now you're getting just my viewpoint. And I realize sometimes I can be a little overbearing in these meetings. So we need other people <laughs> to come along and say, no, what about this? Or what about this, right? So, and it's always, all kidding aside, it is, it's a very positive group. Very. It's a very friendly group of people. Uh, and we're all trying to do the right thing for the farm. So uh, the, the only other thought on, on the Mike Wallace tournament was, is there any interest or capability uh, to create some kind of a proclamation? Uh, you know, I don't know if the town even does proclamations. That they, says, do. They, you know, they, they do. It, it might be a little quick for us uh, <laughs> get that okay. turnaround sure okay. no problem i'll make no the problem. ask tomorrow if you're if you're if you're interested i can make the ask tomorrow it might be a little quick mike you know mike's gonna be with us through january 1st sure um so my my thought was at some point i'll to also have him on on one of the meetings okay hopefully in per, hopefully in person that's my goal um if we can get that get to that point um in november or the december 6th meeting whatever that first one in december is but um okay. I think nice to get back to some personal contact. And yeah. Tom, uh, you'll be there at the ceremony. What's that? You'll be there at the ceremony, Tom. Oh yes. Yep. Great. Yep. Great. Yeah, that's that's it. And so and the there's still room for a few more golfers. Although we have just l last thing, I, I'm kind of talking on and on, but I think we have 112 golfers right now. Are you which is Which is a, a huge, huge uh, uh, outpouring of support, and uh, we also have an auction if you're interested. So. Uh, take a look at the Friends website, friendsofsimsburyfarms.com. And Dave, back to you. No, so first of all, Kelly, thanks for all your effort on that uh, and the, the whole committee that has put that together. Um, and I'll just throw in, if you need my help, uh, I, I have signed up to play, as many of us uh, have. Uh, but, uh, you know, you need somebody to help out with registration or selling tickets afterwards. You know, I'm a shy guy. I hate talking to people. <laughs> so that'll be a problem. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, in regard, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. You know, in regard to the pro proclamation, as much as, again, we appreciate what the Friends has done, I do believe the men's club is going to be having a Greenskeeper revenge event where uh, the men's club will be celebrating him as well. So whether it's a commission meeting or that other event, Tom, in case you run out of time, Kelly, I really like the proclamation idea. So uh, one way or another, let's find a way to do that, Tom. Awesome. Sure. All right. Um, it's so dark here in my porch, I can barely see the agenda. Um, but I think... You must need some lighting. Yeah. Segwaying into the next... Oh, oh, electric oh, bill. it's the lighting! Yeah, perfect! <laughs> so, all right. I, I, I wish I had better news on this topic, because I know you guys uh -oh. ask me about it every time. We, we, the project did go out to bid. The town did receive the bids back about a week, week and a half, a week and a half ago, maybe? Or at least last week, early last week. Um... The bids came back high. We had four four bidders. Bids came back high. Um, the town is exploring options. Um, what options we may have? Uh, there are the project was set up, uh, or the RFP was set up, so that there's a number of deductions that we can take out of the original plan. For instance, uh, outlets on some of the we have outlets on many of the poles. Maybe we can scale that back to just outlets on a few of the poles. I, I'm just throwing one example at you, but um, so. 
uh, the town engineer is has reached out to the town manager to discuss options for the project. Um, the basketball lighting was it is part of this, but it's a separate. It's being it would be paid for uh, if it goes forward through through a donation run through the friends of Simsbury Farms. Uh, the same gentleman who who was interested, who same family I should say. I apologize. Same family that significantly contributed to the construction of the of the basketball courts is interested in funding the the lighting. Um, that project would only be able to happen if the this lighting project takes place because a lot of the infrastructure will be in place at the same or a lot of the uh, digging will be placed in, in place at the same time. It, it can't be done as a separate project. Um, so um, at this point, you know, we're, we're the, the town staff is running the numbers, seeing if we can make it work. Um, not only the lighting, but it's also the fiber uh, line as well, uh, which would connect us to the town, the town hall and board of ed networks. Um, certainly, that'll make a big difference for those of you who tried to call me and hear that buzz or static, or our phone has dropped out in the middle of a phone call. It, we we would certainly love to have that taken care of. Um, this would also allow us to open up the public Wi-Fi capabilities up at the golf course and the ice rink in the pool uh, to a wider network. Um, so we're hopeful that that's going to, well, hopefully it's going to happen. It, it, there's not a part of this project that doesn't affect anybody who uses the farms. So there's, there's a, from, from the safety of the lighting in the parking lot outside the pool and rink. And as you leave the golf course and, and the restaurant at night, these are the things that are important. Um, we should be able to do that. We should be able to improve this. Um, you know, this, this project was first funded through the town's budget. I believe Jerry, before I got here, maybe four years ago. Yes. Four years ago, so obviously the number, you know, the fund, the money the funding was set aside four time. years ago. Yeah, the, the money, the money at that time might have been enough to get this done, and obviously things have escalated over the years. Um, so, and, and right now, we're we're seeing a lot of bids come back high for a number of different projects. Have so. the town take the savings from the solar panels out of the revenue fund budget and put it back towards the infrastructure, and then they can have a greater deficit in the revenue fund budget. That's a, good thought. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thought. <laughs> so let's, I'll, I'll keep you updated. Hopefully by next month, we know what we're doing. I mean, the, the intention was- There you was, go, Tom, uh, one more thing to look into. Yeah, it was, we were hoping to have ground broken on that project this, you know, the next few weeks, but that's, uh, it, we're, we're gonna be pushing into later fall if, if it, or into next spring at this point, so. Last you know, but not least, can I can I just interrupt that? I know a meeting's going long when we have now two new members of the commission. Uh, you, you're on mute, Dave. So I <laughs> okay, say hi. Long when we have two new okay. members, uh, Liz's dog and Danielle's uh, daughter. daughter. There we go. So sorry, I digress. So Danielle's obviously using this meeting to help her put her down for the night. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, it's bedtime. <laughs> All right. So then I, I think that's a great update. Uh, so thank you, Tom. The last thing was, Tom, just the update. And I have one more thing that I need to bring up after that. And it'll be very brief. Um, but the uh, opens the, the master plan. Yes. So I, I've received after uh, the last time we've given correction uh, feedback to our consultant, I have received what I'm hopeful it will be our final draft of that report. I posted it on your Culture Parks and Recreation page, I believe, when I sent out the agenda yesterday or Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, you can find it on that. It, it At that point, um, if you need a hard copy of it, I can provide you with one. You just have to give me two days notice to chop down all those trees. Um, it is quite thick, so I, I would encourage you to look at it online if you could. Um, and then um, we have an open space committee meeting next week that I'll, I'll send it out to them with their agenda. Um, the idea uh, is that we are going to do a special meeting, I believe, of the Board of Selectmen on October 26, which will take place before their regular meeting. And that at that point, the consultant will make their presentation uh, to the Board of Selectmen um, of the final report. Um, I have I've been very busy the last few weeks. I've only gotten through half of the the checking against our last feedback. So I'm hopeful by early next week, I'll have that done. Um, but it's so far so good. It looks, you know, we didn't have a ton of corrections from last time, but I think we're, we're, we're near the finish, so. All right, the last item I wanted to bring up is actually uh, based upon uh, an email that I believe uh, Tom, you sent out today 
uh, regarding uh, Sarah's participation in the Sustainability Committee. Uh, so, Sarah, thank you. You've done great work. We appreciate what you've done. Uh, and what Sarah has done is really indicated to us this is a really, really valuable committee. Uh, Sarah has got her hands in a number of tills, obviously, the Friends of the Farms, this commission, other things. And uh, this is where we're really looking to, uh, I won't pick on by name, but I'm looking to my newer members of the commission to consider taking over this position. Uh, again, part of our role is not only here, but it's in other areas. We are volunteers. We are people that have taken an interest in the town and what the town does. And so uh, I really want to encourage, frankly, some of the newer rep you know, new folks in the commission to consider taking Sarah's place. Uh, Sarah, so I'm going to just turn this over to you real quick. That Why do you think this has really been a valuable uh, committee that you've participated with? Um, oh, my off mute. Um, yeah, this is a great, it's an initiative that Simsbury undertook, um, I would say about a year and a half ago, and we kind of came out of nowhere and um, really quickly actually got approved at the Silver Status Certification for the Sustainable Connecticut uh, program and so they you know we put together this committee rather quickly and it's it's got a number of um, really forward-thinking um, people promoting sustainability in Simsbury and there's so many you know, we spent the first year kind of aggregating things to kind of meet this criteria and then moving ahead um, you know I think we're really looking to do more positive things and, and there's um, you know there's this is a great committee for somebody who really is passionate about um, sustainability and um, you know improving the environment and um, and community and um, you know it probably could use somebody who's got some fresh thoughts and um, a lot of passion for it and uh, you know I'm happy to continue to serve if nobody else really wants to but um, you know this I think it's a good opportunity if somebody really feels strongly that this is something that they would want to participate in so I would encourage you guys to kind of look at that material from Tom um, that he sent and you know feel free to ask me any questions you can email me um, as an aside or come to a, a, you know our next meeting um, certainly join in um, to learn a little bit more about it but it's a it's a super and it, it's going to be around for a really long time um, board of selectmen is you know pushes this it's huge I get to work directly with Tom uh, you know I think I harass him more than anything else um, you know he does most of the hard work and I just do the communicating Jerry does that. <laughs> I think that's the nature of love you're everything the second, but you're the second most harasser yeah but there's it's a really great opportunity to, to kind of seize the day and do really do some really great things for the town moving forward well thanks Sarah that uh, again I just so I really encourage Again, I'm looking to, as you can tell, there are some of us more established members that are, are working on things like the RFP, the RFQ, open space, and, and things, you know, that it's, this is where the newer members come in to say. If you're, Sarah, how many, how many weeks, like how, how much commitment do you need? Like, is it once a month? Is it? The meetings are once a month, yeah. And, you know, when it may be a little bit more work kind of on your own time um, with other members as we get close to certain certification to kind of pull materials together but otherwise you know so far they've and I for this foreseeable future I would imagine correct Tom um, probably zoom meetings um, and they're just once a month and it's about an hour thank you I might talk to you more awesome. later thank you here we go we're making progress all right uh, can I have it, it, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about this evening yeah, not hearing anything do I have a motion to adjourn so moved do I have a second? I see Kelly raised his hand. <laughs> Folks, uh, again, we had a full agenda. Really, really appreciate your time this evening. Tom, thank you for all your efforts. And Jerry, thank you for all your efforts, uh, especially recently with what we have going on um, with this RFQ and the RFP. But folks, really, again, we're, we're volunteers. Thank you for everything you've done. And we'll see some or all of you on the 2nd of October. You got it.